Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, City Hall Plaza. My name is Moses Rodriguez, and I'm one of the city councilors here in the city of Brockton. To my right, we have council at large, um, Tina Cardozo, and council at large, Rita Mendez. And we felt that it was important for us to do this as a community to call attention to what happened down in Texas. But before we begin, I'd like, to, if we could all stand, turn to the U.S. flag at that pole, and let's do the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance in honor of Elder Fernandez. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to call to the microphone Father Irineo Correa, who is a, a visiting priest from Cape Verde. He's studying in Rome. He's affiliated with St. Edith Stein Parish here in the city of Brockton. He is the pastor or the priest of the uh, Cape Verdean community here in the city. So, Father Correa, could you? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. One nation under God. Amen. No justice, no peace. God created us for love, for live, and for happiness. We stand today here for Elder Fernandez. It's a lot of sadness. We have no word to express what we feel. Toda a situação ali está mexendo com o nosso tudo, Cabo Verdeano e não só. Que eu preciso não nos ser cristão, eu preciso não nos ser gente, alguém para nos sentir isso na pele. É preciso nós nos falar não a isto, para morrer que é aquele que é a vontade de Deus. Nesse momento de vigília ali, nos junta nós tudo. E nos junta não um único voz para nos falar não a isto. É verdade, mas não está por tudo na mão de Deus. Mas é preciso nós nos fazer alguma coisa. Por isso que nos está ali juntar para nós nos reclama justiça e paz, que mais nós no mestre. Que Deus abençoe o nosso estudo, abençoe esse momento, e que nosso estudo nos sinta confortável nesse momento, para nós nos pedir justiça, e que justiça seja feita, no nome de Deus. Amém. Amém. Thank you, Father Correa. Uh, his message is very simple, that although God helps, but it's also important for men to put their hands down mm -hmm. and help those that, that need help. Uh, when we first uh, came together, the three of us, to uh, put together this visual, we talked about doing something to find uh, Elder Fernandes, because he was missing. Uh, and then we found out just a couple days ago that he was found dead in Texas, some 30 miles away from where he lives. There's a lot of us that have a lot of questions, and we're here basically demanding answers. It's pretty sad when we as a country, and I can speak this way because I'm actually someone who served in the military as well. I served six years in the United States Navy and when we basically swear to defend the Constitution of this country, we basically swear to basically defend the humans of this country against all enemies. And it's pretty sad when we are now losing more soldiers at, US, at a U.S. base in Texas than we've lost soldiers in the war of Afghanistan and Iraq. It's not supposed to be this way. We're not supposed to lose soldiers in our own homeland. There's something ill going on at Fort Hood. 
And I'm glad we've got some officials that are looking into this. But we got to do something about this because we cannot continue to do this. It's absolutely not right for us to lose 10 young people yes. since March to violence at that base. There is something ill going on there, and it needs to get fixed. It needs to be taken care of because we cannot continue to do this. Families cannot continue to go through this, and we as a country have to demand answers for what's going on. So please join us in welcoming my colleague from the City Council as well, Councillor Tina Cardoso. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, everyone. I hope you can hear me. They tell me I'm soft-spoken. My family wouldn't say that. I'm deeply, deeply saddened by the disappearance and now passing of Sergeant Fernandez. This is a mother's worst nightmare. As a mother, my heart breaks for Alina Fernandez. Unfortunately, in my 48 years on Earth, I have had to witness many friends, family members, and members of my Cape Verdean community lose their children to illness, accidents, suicide, and violent crime. Sorry, I'm a crybaby. And each time, it hurts. It hurts all of us as a community. Even though we're not directly related, and even though we don't really know each other, and even though we don't see each other often, it hits home, and it feels like it's our own. Jesse Correa in Boston, let us not forget. Giovanni in Portugal, let us not forget. And now, Sergeant Fernandez in Texas. Sorry. and the countless numbers of other young men and women that we've lost in our community. It all hits home, we all feel the pain, and it further traumatizes our already traumatized community. That is why my colleagues, Moses Rodriguez, Rita Menz, and I on the council, and members of the community, Felicia Damon, we came together to hold this vigil. First, it was to pray for Elder to return home safely and now we pray that the family gets the support and the answers that they need and deserve. I thank you all for being here today. I ask that when you return home, that we all do what we can to continue to shine light on this issue, like Councilor Rodriguez said, and that we continue to pray for justice for Sergeant Elder Fernandez. May he rest in peace and may God bless his family and guide them to the peace they need in their hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Uh, before I share the microphone with Councillor at large, Rita Mendes, I want to just to uh, share with you uh, the words from the mayor here from the city who uh, wanted to be here tonight, but he's down in the Cape. Uh, he had a uh, mini vacation scheduled with his family. But he wanted to make sure that I share with you and the family, I'm also related to Elder Fernandes, but he wanted to share with the family his unconditional support for whatever we need to do here for him in the city of Brockton. Uh, Rita Mendes. Sorry, Moses. So, sorry, we forgot to mention the um, elected officials that are here with us today. We'd like to thank Councillor from Ward 5, Jeffrey Thompson, Councillor from Ward 6, Jack Lally, Councillor from Ward 4, Susan Castro, um, our representative from Southeastern School Committee, uh, Tony Branch, Bishop Branch, uh, Phyllis Ellis from NAACP, Count you in, fellas. Thank you. Um, Carlos De Silva running for uh, Plymouth County. Jack Redden running for Plymouth, Plymouth County. Our school committee, Joyce Azak, and Congressman Stephen Lynch, and Robbie Goldstein running for Congressman. Thank you all for joining.
Good evening, everyone. Sorry. This is a, a very, very hard moment, and there's absolutely no words that I could say at this moment. It was um, very difficult to even come before all of you here tonight just because of the, the story. And um, no parent should ever, ever have to go through uh, losing their child. And um, when a wife loses the husband, she's called a widow. And then when the husband loses the wife, they're a widower. And then when the child loses the parent, they're orphan. But when a parent loses his or her child, there's no words to even describe that. So there's absolutely nothing that any of us could say here today that is going to really explain into words what this family is feeling. But I know what brings joy to my heart is to see all of you here tonight. And we're here in vigil with our candles, with our prayers, with our beliefs, to really pray to God. Because God is the only one that can comfort this family and help them go through the struggles that they are going through. So here tonight, let this prayer not be uh, while we are here. But when we go home, let's remember this family. Let's pray for justice. Let's pray for answers. And let's stand behind them and let them know that we are all Brockton. We're here together. We're proud. We're proud of this soldier who's really chose to be an American and chose to serve this country, this great nation. He, he wasn't an American by birth, but by choice. And that is very powerful. So he should really be honored and, and to rest in peace and with honor because he was a very brave soldier. So we are honored that he's from Brockton. He made this choice to serve our country. And we're, we're very pleased that he chose to do that and sad, very sad that this has happened. So I just ask that we continue to support this family with prayers, that we are here for them, and, that, and I know that they know that. And thank you, each and every one of you, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, at this time, I'm going to call to the microphone a, uh, a young man who's running for Congress, uh, Robbie Goldstein, to come up and say a few words. We are here tonight because of a horrible tragedy, a preventable and an avoidable death, the loss of a young, brave and inspiring man who was willing to sacrifice so that his family, his community of Brockton, his country could succeed. And tonight all of us are mourning his loss. In that morning, we are angry, we are frustrated. We are disappointed, and we have profound sadness. Sadness for Sergeant Fernandez's family and his community, and I offer my deepest and most heartfelt condolences to this community of Brockton that is in mourning. I ask us to remember that in our mourning, we must also act. We know this summer has been filled with tragedy that has devastated the communities of Massachusetts and all across our country. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Jacob Blake, Elder Fernandez. These tragedies are not simply a problem of racism in our policing system. They are not just a reflection of racism and discrimination in the United States military. They are not just a problem of limited access to mental health care that so many black and Latino families face in this country. These are tragedies that are born out of 400 years of victimization, marginalization, and stigmatization. This year alone, too many soldiers based at Fort Hood have vanished or died. Brave men and women like Elder, who are willing to put their life on the line to protect our nation. And somehow, we as a nation have failed them. We owe Sergeant Fernandez and we owe his family more than just our thoughts and prayers today. We owe them more than a military burial or a candlelight vigil. We owe them answers. We must tell them why their son, 
their brother, their cousin, their nephew, their friend was taken. We must hold those responsible accountable. And we must root out stigma and marginalization because that is why Elder didn't get the help that he needed. That is why the government did not act. And it's why the tragedies of this summer have hit you and this community so hard. To honor Sergeant Fernandez, to bring him justice, we must talk about how we end stigma and how we lift up those who have been left out for too long. We have to address racism and bias and victimization and hate in every part of our society. And that is hard work. It is work that each of us needs to do from our own hearts and with our own actions. We cannot erase the anger we feel tonight. We cannot wash away the sadness, but we can hold our brother elder in our hearts and in our minds. And we can remember who he is, someone brave and kind and good and selfless. Someone who fought for us and our freedom, and now is the time that we must fight for him. In my religion, at an event like this, we recite the Mourner's Kaddish, a prayer for those who have died and a reminder of God's greatness. Tonight, I will simply say, may God bless Elder Fernandez, may God bless his family and his community, and may Elder rest in peace and in power. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, our Congressman Stephen Lynch has been instrumental in meeting with the family as soon as he heard uh, in Texas. As a matter of fact, I think he just came back uh, this morning back to Massachusetts. And I've, uh, I was in conversation with the family. They really appreciate the work that the Congressman has done down there. So Congressman Stephen Lynch. Thank you, Counselor. And it's good to be with you tonight. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Counselor Cardoza. Uh, Cardoza. Thank you, Counselor Mendez and, and the other city counselors. The last conversation I had with Elena, uh, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Fernandez's mom, and his aunt Isabel, and his, his brother Elton, at, uh, at Fort Hood yesterday. I said to them, I heard from Shana Barnes, my, my staffer here in Brockton, that there's going to be a vigil tomorrow, tomorrow night in Brockton on behalf of your son. And you could see the the love in their eyes and the appreciation in their eyes for that, for that kindness. So I want to say on their behalf, thank you for being here. Thank you for remembering Sergeant Elder Fernandez. He was a son of Brockton. He chose, he chose to put on that uniform of our country. And when any, when any son or daughter does that, when any son or daughter puts on the uniform of our country, they stand in our place, right? They stand in our place. They become all of our sons and daughters, all of our sons and daughters. Sergeant Fernandez's mother asked me to go to Texas. She said they were not getting the answers they needed from the military. So in addition to the angst and the frustration and the grief in their hearts, they were also facing an uncooperative uh, military. So with the help of Senator Markey and Senator Warren, we, we got together. They decided that because I chair the Subcommittee on National Security and I do this type of work oversight, that I should be the one to go down on their behalf and on your behalf to try to get some answers. We had a day-long briefing with all of the officers yesterday who are in, or were in 
Sergeant Fernandez, chain of command. We demanded documents. We demanded medical records that had previously been denied to the family. But most of all, we were there to demand respect. We were there to re demand respect for the family and the memory of Sergeant Elder Fernandez. The situation there at Fort Hood is, is very bad. Just so you know, Elder Fernandez was the 10th, the 10th soldier that went missing within this year. The 10th. We're losing more people at Fort Hood than we are in Afghanistan, which is a, a live uh, battle theater. Five of those cases have been rendered as or, or classified as unsolved homicides, unsolved homicides by the Killeen, Texas, which is the, the city that Fort Hood is located in. Clearly a lack of resources to get to the bottom of this, number one. So what Senator Warren, Senator Markey, and myself are doing is demanding federal resources, use the entire force of our congressional delegation and our federal government to go in and to investigate this and to get the, get the answers, get the answers that the Fernandez family demand. Give them justice. Give them justice. We cannot give them their son back, but we can give them a measure of justice that they have earned and they deserve. The second thing we can do, this is the tenth case. Many of those cases dealt with sexual abuse in the military. And it has gone on, as I said, for some time now. At least 10 people in this past year. We need to root that out from a top to bottom review of the officers in charge, the generals in control here, because obviously they are not taking that cultural defect seriously. That was true in the Guillen case, and that is now true in the Fernandez case. I told the officers there yesterday that Fort Hood, within the Army, is sustaining unchangeable reputational damage, not only for, on behalf of the Fernandez family, but for every mother and father's son and daughter, whoever decides to put on the uniform of this country. If we want patriotism in our country, we have to be patriots on behalf of every person, regardless of what your color is, who you love, where your status is in the United States society. We should stand up for you if you are standing up for us in, in the United States military. That's a, that's a promise that we make to every, each and every soldier. I have to say that during the briefing yesterday, every officer who was in El, Elder Fernandez's chain of command reported that he was an excellent soldier, an excellent soldier that enthusiastically performed his duties. He, had promoted, he was promoted very quickly during his tour in Germany to a rank of sergeant. His responsibilities were for chemical, biological, and nuclear countermeasures, a major skill set in today's military. He was highly valued by his brothers and sisters in arms. So we owe it to him. We owe it to him to bring justice to his family, but also, and I think this is very important for the family as well, we need to stay true and keep the faith with respect to Sergeant Elder Fernandez, his own reputation and his legacy and the work that he tried to do as a young man and as a soldier on behalf of this country. That is happening tonight. It is happening right here 
and it's happening because of you and because of the council. The thing that the thing that the Fernandez family needs most right now is your support and your prayers. Your prayers. My mother-in-law is a gold star sister, and uh, she lost her brother Arnie in the Second World War in his first jump over the Rhine about five months before the end of the war in Germany. I have not carried that burden as a family member who loses a son or a brother or a nephew in the military, but I have witnessed it. I have witnessed it. And, and my mother-in-law, who lives with us, she says I live with her, she's 95 years old. She says her favorite days are Veterans Day and Memorial Day, because she says while she suffers in silence on her own on every other day with the loss of her brother, she believes that on Memorial Day and on Veterans Day, her neighborhood, her town, her city, her state, and her country mourn with her and remember with her. She said, on those days, I take strength from the people around me who share my grief and share my memory and remember my brother. So you being here is much in the same spirit. You are here to support the Fernandez family in their loss. And by doing so, you share some of their burden tonight. And I thank you for that. May God bless you all. May God bless the city of Brockton. May God bless and have mercy on Elder Fernandez and lift the grief of his family. And may God continue to bless these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Lynch. I just want to acknowledge our Senator Mike Brady, who's here with us. Thank you, Senator. And I'd like to acknowledge um, the REMAX Synergy group that are here um, to support their sister. She was the aunt of, um, of Elder Fernandez, Isabel Fernandez. Correct, guys? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. They're a large group. They're in the back. Thank you for coming out. And I want to acknowledge any veterans or anybody that's in the uh, armed forces or any police officers, anyone out here, thank you for coming and thank you for serving. And I'll give it to Moses. Thank you, Tina. Uh, we have a uh, representative of the family. We know that the mother the mother and the other aunt is in Texas still going through this whole process, but we have with us John Cicada and Leonil Denevj, who are uncles and aunts of Elder Fernandez that will say a couple words and thanks for all of you who are here today. Hello, good evening everyone. I just, I'm here on behalf of the family to say thank you for all the support that we'll be getting through this very difficult time. Um, again, I, I was not expect to be here, you know, to question the United States Army. Um, one of the most powerful thing in the world, we were here to question they, their trust and everything. Uh, we are here demanding, demanding justice for Elder. Um, we know he went there for a good cause. We know um, he went to serve the country and he's not with us anymore for a bad reason, for something that shouldn't happen. Everybody is devastating, everybody is demanding justice, and, um, and that's what we want. Uh, we want our voice to go from here, Brockton, to Congress, to Texas, to Fort Hood, to, for everybody to uh, be with us, you know, to make this, uh, you know, uh, make Elder, uh, find the justice for Elder, you know, um, um, and uh, to support the family throughout this difficult time. I know um, Alina is there, my wife Isabel is there, you know, they'll be coming soon, uh, but, um, with hope that will come with some answers, you know. Well, that's all we ask. Thank you so much. And uh, 
this is Leonel de Nevis, Fernandez Nevis, and I want to thank you everyone for showing up, all the support, which what we need right now. And I know it does not bring Elder Fernandez here to us, but at least we're going to stand up for him, for what he did, for what he did. He chose to be there. No one forced him to go there, but he chose to be there. He's a Cape Verdean, but he chose to come to this country, to serve this country. Indeed, indeed. 23 years old. He could have been somewhere else partying, but he focused himself on the studies, on the book, as you could read, as you could know, as you did to hear it. He had many, 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 many. Anyway. So thank you everyone for standing up here with us. As my brother-in-law said, we want this to be heard from everywhere, to go everywhere, not just the Fort Hood, everywhere. Whoever have their son, think twice to send them to the army. And they told me, you can find a basket full of apples. One should be bad, but that one might infect with all bacteria to that basket of apples. So what we need to do? We need to take that bad apple and throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash so it does not infect the other apples. I understand there's good cops, there's bad cops. But you know what? What do you do? You take care of the bad ones so it does not go to the good ones. I understand that. But it's my nephew. It could have been my son. I have two sons. How am I going to tell him, okay, you're choosing to go to the army? How am I supposed to tell him tomorrow? How am I supposed to tell him tomorrow? Whoever is a mother is feeling Alina's pain right now. He's feeling it. I understand that. But that is Alina's pain. That's her pain. She's the only one who's feeling that pain. We might think we know her pain. We don't have no idea. I understand that. So please, bear with us. Stay with us. Support us. Because we want this to be heard from to everywhere. Now, how am I going to tell my son, oh, your, nep, your, your uncle is dead? How am I going to tell him that? Why? How are you going to explain that to a child? So please. Please, take care of your kids. They want to do something, they want to do the right thing by this country. Talk to them. Talk to them. It's very painful to stand right here thinking that my sister is there, both of them, bearing this loss. Bearing his loss. What else can I say? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the congressmen, everybody on the politicians. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, as it's been said here, very clear, Elder was a young man who was born in Cape Verde. He came to America at age 10, uh, graduated from Brockton High School, and then enlisted in the military to serve this great country of ours. And he was betrayed by this country that he signed on to because there has been no justice for him since he actually went and filed the complaints that he filed. I believe it's time that we take the hood off Fort Hood. We need to uncover what's going on in that place because America needs to wake up because we cannot continue to lose young men and women in our own army base in the United States of America. Para Cavordianos que estão ali, muito obrigado pelo estudo que vem hoje. A do bem ali para o celebra e ao mesmo tempo do mandou mensagem ao governo americano que nós vida também tá conta, nós vida também é importante. E vida de Elder Fernandes que vem de Cabo Verde, um menino que vem de Cabo Verde, que por ele tropeçava, se uma tia o ministro também o que vem América tá tropeça, é que tropeça. Ele escolhe escola, e termina essa escola, é enlista ou é mete no serviço militar para defender esse grande país que é os Estados Unidos. E serve no país estrangeiro, mas que teve problema no país estrangeiro. E bem morre dentro desse país que ele resolve, na protege e defende. Então é importante para nós tudo que está ali para continuar a 
de manter com mão forte e firme para ter resposta no que é que acontecer com aquele rapazinho na Texas. Nós tudo saber, mas ninguém que tomar a cabeça 30 milhas longe de ser casa. 30 milhas longe de ser apartamento que seu corpo foi encontrar. Se um alguém quer matar a cabeça, ele mata a cabeça mais perto de sua casa, e não 30 milhas. Então, a resposta se me ser, ser dado, e nós, como comunidade, está demandando que a resposta. Para o dado, ele tem mente, e que está significante e suficiente para nós, do que estou continuando a demanda. E nós tudo devemos fazer aquela, como o povo que nós é, quando que está ali de passagem. A nós, a cidadão americano, se matura o alguém que está ali, do que está ali, se país, se o alguém que está ali. Então é importante por manter a nossa comunidade unida e sempre junto e ao mesmo tempo fica a pena de um e demanda resposta para nossas perguntas. E isso é basicamente going to conclude our little service here. Again, we didn't uh, ask people to come here to pray in vain. We ask people to come here, pray with us, but at the same time, help us demand answers. Because we have to have answers because this cannot continue. Uh, the, and not in this America. Not in the America that I signed in to serve years ago. So we're going to come together, pray together, and I'm going to ask uh, my good friend, uh, Bishop Tony, to come up and close this out for us. But before we go, we want to make sure that everybody who brought a candle with them light their candle up in honor, in honor of the great young men who wore a uniform to defend this country. We want to bless the name of a holy God as people are grabbing candles. I'm going to say a few words because this is about justice. I'm going to ask that if there's any member of the military service that is here now to join us at the podium. I'm going to ask that if there's any young person that has signed up for military service, if you have signed up for ROTC, if you're in the junior ROTC, join us at the podium. I'm going to ask that if you, I feel you all, whether your family or not, with candles to join us at the podium. Because this is about America seeing that the son of Brockton has been murdered and that we're not going to take it. That we're not going to take it. No more. We will listen to the will of the family. We've done our prayers. We've cried, we've mourned, but we've lost our son. So I'm going to ask that you join me at the podium because this is not about a preacher or any individual politician. This is about the men and women of God who've decided that justice will reign in this city and across this country. Join us. For the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The Bible goes on to say that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whomever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The body of Sergeant Elder Fernandez was found 
from what I read last, on, on last Tuesday, more than a week after he had been reported missing. I found it very interesting that his automobile remained in the parking lot of the base. I find it very interesting that his body laid in eternal rest some 30 miles from his car. Y'all not talking back. There's something wrong with it. Say I want justice. I want justice. Say I want justice. This 23-year-old man, this 23-year-old American, this 23-year-old soldier suffered at the wickedness of this land. Fort Hood has had a string of wicked crimes. I heard somebody say, 10 as of today. When is enough going to be enough? We want justice. When the leadership of a military base in the United States of America can receive information that a soldier has received a sexual assault, liberty and justice is the oath that the soldier has taken. Liberty and justice is what the soldier should have received. There's wickedness in the land of America. This young man took an oath that he would die for me. Y'all, come on. That he would die for each and every one of you. He took an oath. So you can't forget. He took the oath. Y'all didn't take it. Y'all didn't take it. He took the oath, our Brockton son, that he would protect us from foreign and domestic. There's something wrong with our military service at this so-called Fort Hood. Now, I know that they named in July a five-person sort of task force. Well, that ain't good enough. The hell with your task force. We want justice. 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 I get so tired of hearing people say, well, somebody has died and they're gone. They're not gone. They're, they're in all of our spirit. They're in the spirit of his family. They're in the spirit of every individual that showed up here today. So on today, we demand justice because he signed up to give us liberty and justice. And we will not leave. We will not leave this life until we find out what happened to the son of Brockton. If you believe that, say amen. 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 We will not sleep until we find out what happened to the son of Brockton. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And every time we're sitting at our dinner table, we will remember Sergeant Fernandez. We will remember that we lost one of our own on our own land, not in Afghanistan, not in Iraq, not in Libya, but here. You all should be angry. You all, let, me, let me be clear to you. I've been preaching for 35 years. Yes, you pray. Yes, you give honor to God. But God is not a foolish God that you sit there and you take no energy to fight for what is right. You receive power from the Spirit of God. And through that power, we seek justice. If you believe that, say justice. justice. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we come today to united together as one. Lord, the God of Abraham, you sent through, whoo, through, through our DNA, all the power of the Spirit. Lord, you created us in your image. And upon today, Lord, we although we walk out of here, we leave here with the reign of justice in our spirit. Lord, we will not sleep. We know that you will guide us through the morning process. But God, we will not rest. We know you that you will guide us through the morning process. God, we will not stop crying, but we know that you're going to guide us through the morning process. That when sunlight comes again, that the righteousness of your spirit will touch the hands of those military leaders so that the cloak of lying and manipulation and cover up will be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ through the blood of the second Adam, I pray. For those of us that are part of the redemption, please say amen. amen. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Amen.
Thank you, Bishop. Uh, this concludes our little service here today, but I want to uh, just pass on some information to you all. Sergeant Fernandes will be buried in the city of Brockton. Amen. Amen. Yes. With military honors. Thank you. And if the military will not honor him, we will. We the city of Brockton will, will honor him. Yes. And we will bury him as the honored son that he is to us. Amen. And we've promised this to the family. As a matter of fact, we are demanding an independent autopsy yes. to make sure yes. that what they say happened to him really happened to him. Amen. So we'll keep the community informed and we will do this together as a community because that young man did not deserve to go that way. No, no, no. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. Thank you very much for adhering to our social distancing and wearing masks. But at the same time, this must and had to be done. Yes, yes. Because if we didn't do it, the United States Army isn't going to do it for us. Amen. So it's important right. for us to do it. And we will do it as a community for the young son of Brockton. Amen. Thank you very much. May God continue to bless you all. And may God continue to bless this great country of ours. Thank you and good night.